Hello, this is Brandon Farr with Level Up Strategies, and in as short a period of time as possible, we're gonna tell you the difference between passive house and net zero. Specifically, when you're talking about both of these, you are getting a high performance home, a house that uses as a small amount of energy as possible. Starting with passive house, they set a performance standard for your home. They say that there is a maximum amount of energy that you can use per year per square meter or square foot of your house. And they set the limit for that, not just for the total year, but also in any particular moment. So on the hottest day of the year, your air conditioning can only use this amount of energy in order to cool down your house. If your house is inefficient, it'll surge load and it'll actually break the threshold of certification for passive house. So you need to make sure that's inside of their parameters. They're also going to set a limit on how much energy your home can use by natural gas or electricity total per year, just to make sure you're not just shrinking your electrical loads and then boosting your uh, fossil fuel consumption to offset that. And as far as air tightness goes, they set the gold standard at 0.6 air changes per hour, which is absolutely achievable. And they throw in this thermal comfort criteria that says that your house isn't allowed to overheat on the hottest days of the year. They're saying 25 degrees Celsius, 77 degrees Fahrenheit is the maximum. You can only break that 10% of the hours per year available. They, they set a comfort criteria here. Jumping over to net zero. Net zero implies that your house generates as much energy as it uses. In BC, in Canada, when we're from, we have a BC Energy Step Code. They want us to get the Step 5, which is net zero ready. So the province of British Columbia has outlined some criteria. They're going to talk about a TEDI, which is a thermal energy demand intensity measured in kilowatt hours per meter squared per year, just like the heating demand for Passive House. What they've done is they've broken it up over climate zones. If you're in Vancouver, it's 15 kilowatt kilowatt hours per meter squared per year move into Kelowna you're in 20 move up to Prince George you're in 25 based on climate zones so there's a bit of flexibility in the range there then they talk about mechanical energy use intensity again measured in kilowatt hours per year and you're going to notice that by climate zones they give you a little bit more tolerance on how much energy your mechanical systems and your air conditioning and heating systems are able to use there and then as far as air tightness goes they set a threshold of one air change per hour or less as, as in contradiction to the passive house. Both are fantastic. Typical housing constructions are two, three air changes per hour. So this is still a marked improvement. I hope that helps clarify really succinctly. I'm gonna load these values into the description. Rock and roll, have a great day.